Hi, I'm Debbie Sardone, cleaning business development expert and the founder of Cleaning Business Fundamentals. Congratulations, you are amazing. And how do I know this? Because you are here when others are not. <laughs> others are maybe watching TV or out working another job or uh, wasting time, you know, surfing the internet. <laughs> but you are here so you can learn and you can grow and up level your business. So, congratulations, learners are earners. Today, you will discover the secret to building a seven figure self running business. I know it sounds cheesy, and I know a lot of people out there say that they can teach you to do this who haven't actually done it. Um, I know, but I promise you you are in exactly the right place if you want a business that can run without you maybe someday soon or maybe someday in the future but a business that can run without you and still pay you very very well for your time so don't go anywhere turn off all your distractions don't check email or facebook turn off any notifications and pay attention like your life depends on it. Because if you ever want your life back, if you want freedom and prosperity, listen carefully and take notes. And then at the end, I will make a special offer for those who would like to work with me further. So first, a big thank you to Zen Maid, Amar and team for hosting a mega learning Zen Made Summit. Thank you so much for doing this and allowing me to be a part. Learners are earners. So did you know the most important thing you can do at whatever stage of business you are in is to keep learning. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is priceless. The knowledge you gain today is worth more than a few more dollars in the bank made by those who may be opted to go clean another job or to make another buck. So don't miss out on the knowledge to get more dollars in your bank account long term with less effort, not working more, but working smarter. Because knowledge is the key to getting more and keeping it. If I had to choose today between making more or knowing more, I would choose knowing more hands down. So you're in the right place. Congratulations, I'm so glad you're here. You are about to know more than you knew yesterday about building a seven-figure self-running business or a multi-seven-figure self-running business if you're already at a million dollars or more. So here's the thing. Very few cleaning business owners have cracked the dirt code on prosperity and freedom. Most have one or the other or neither. 99% of the people I talk to either don't make enough, they work too hard, or both. They don't make enough and they work too hard. But I'm going to be blunt. Most people are living what I call the entrepreneurial lie. <laughs> They've bought into the lie that in order to become wealthy, you have to work like a dog. You have to work all the time. That you have to trade having a life for making more money. That you have to trade time that belongs to your family for growing your business and creating the kind of income that you desire. That you have to choose between having a rich life or having a rich lifestyle. This is a lie. The Entrepreneurial Myth, one of my favorite books of all times. I forgot to bring it here with me today, but one of my favorite books of all time by Michael Gerber, go get it if you have not read it, is called The Entrepreneurial Myth. And I call this The Entrepreneurial Lie, where you basically literally can work yourself into a grave and some people never have anything to show for it. Others might have a lot of money to show for it, but they don't have a life. And there's no way to enjoy what they've made. And that entrepreneurial lie is that to be wealthy, you have to work day and night, 24-7, seven days a week. You have to work all the time. So let me tell you 
how I know this to be true, this entrepreneurial life. Let me tell you a little bit about my story. I married my high school sweetheart when I was 18. Um, I wasn't college bound, I was marriage bound. I had my first baby at age 22. His name is Steven, he's a grown adult now with two beautiful children, a wife and a business of his own. But that's how long ago I started my business. Um, it was right around the time I had my first baby at age 22. And I've been financially independent from a very young age. I actually went to work at McDonald's at the age of 14 with permission from the school work program. I don't know how I got out of school to do that, but I got out of school every day at noon to go work at McDonald's. I had my own paycheck. I was buying my own clothes when I was uh, in my early teenage years. I even bought and paid for my very first car at age 16. My parents weren't wealthy, but they were wonderful. And I got my independence from my mom. Um, she was a super role model. And my mom was the only working mom on the block. And that was back in the 60s and 70s. All the other moms stayed home, but my mom worked. <laughs> uh, us Clayton girls, we were all about our own money. So true story, I bought my Ford Maverick back, um, you know, right around the time I was 16. I'd saved up my money. My dad also helped me pay for it. And it was an old car that had been auctioned off from a company. Back then it was called GTE. It's the phone company. Now it's AT&T. But back then it was GTE and it was one of the old company cars that was auctioned off. And there was like a blue stripe down the center of this white car that I bought. And it was really a great car. But some kid made fun of me because he said, oh, you're driving a GTE car. So somehow you could tell that signature look of the company car and the blue stripe they painted down the car didn't really camouflage. And I was so embarrassed. I and mean, again, this is, you know, teenage years, peer pressure. I saved up $600 and had the car painted blue. <laughs> I had my own money and uh, I was doing my own thing. So at age 22, I'd only been married a few years, uh, had a brand new baby and a husband in law enforcement. So you know how big that income is. It's not going to be huge. I was itching to make my own money. And back then I called it fun money, but I wanted to make my own money. So I did what people did back then. I looked in the classified section of the newspaper and I was looking for a job and I saw some interesting things and I saw somebody advertising for wanting a house cleaner. And so I called them up and I was invited to her house. I gave her a bid. I had no idea what to charge. And so she offered me 20 bucks to clean her house. I thought I'd hit the jackpot. <laughs> that tells you guys how old I am. I literally thought I hit the jackpot. I could not believe people could afford to pay $5 an hour. So I brought my baby with me, Stephen, and I cleaned for four hours at a time. And she thought I did such a good job. She had me come twice a week. So there I was making $40 in cold, hard cash when I was 22, cleaning houses, didn't know what I was doing. And um, I just couldn't believe the money. I thought it was fantastic. And I love the experience. Now, of course, fast forward several years um, had gone by and I had a lot to learn over the next few years, but fast forward several years when things started growing out of control and my business got complicated, it began to take more and more and more of my time. And it was literally consuming me every waking moment of my life. Now you gotta remember, this was the days before the internet, before we all had personal computers and before we had cell phones. So I can't even imagine business owners who allow their business to get out of control nowadays because literally your business is with you every waking moment. But my business was with me and on my mind nearly every waking moment. I actually had a beeper, <laughs> a pager back then and I wore it on my purse or on my, my pants waistband. And people literally who would meet me out in public for the first time, 
back then, and some of you guys are like, oh my goodness, how old is this lady? Um, I was 10 when I started my business, but people would literally ask me if I was a doctor because only doctors carried business, um, carried beepers back then or pagers. You know, it was a little pager, a little beeper, and only doctors carried them back then. I still have my pager for uh, memories and it's in my desk drawer at the office. And so I would tell people, no, I'm not a doctor, but I do make house calls. <laughs> and if you are sick of cleaning, give me a call. And then I'd hand them my business card. I thought it was so clever. But anyway, my business was beginning to run me ragged. And uh, it was running me. I wasn't running it. And it was growing so fast and growing out of control. I didn't have systems in place. I did not know what I was doing. I didn't have a business plan. I didn't even know what a business plan was. I was just winging it every step of the way. And we were growing so fast. I couldn't bear to turn down business and lose the opportunity to make some more money. But it was eking into my personal life. And I was losing my quality of time and I was losing myself to my business. And I remember the day I quit. I remember it like it's yesterday. I remember sitting at my kitchen table in my, our little house over in Westchester Estates in Flower Mound, Texas, and things had just grown out of control. I was doing estimates in the evenings and on Saturdays. I mean, I would literally come home from cleaning all day and trying to manage one or two employees that I had hired. And um, I, I would cook dinner really quick and feed the kids and then have my husband bathe them and read their story time. And I'd be out the door to go do an estimate. And I just remember the day I was just overwhelmed with business and I was crying. And I told my husband, I quit. I can't do this anymore. I knew I had lost my priorities. I didn't know how to get things back under control. I didn't know how to tame the growth. I hated the chaos and the drama and the employees that I just couldn't train. I couldn't get them to clean like I do. So I couldn't stop doing the cleaning. I had to keep checking on them and helping. And I remember the day I quit and I told my husband, I can't do this anymore. I'm just going to quit. I'm going to close my doors. I'm going to call all of my customers and tell them I appreciate their business. And I'm just going to give my customers away to my two or three employees because I can't clean and live like this. And I remember how calm my husband was. And he said, you know, Deborah, you can do whatever you want. I mean, he, he had a great job, obviously, job security with the police department. Um, but he could tell I had hit rock bottom. And he said, Deborah, you can do whatever you want. But he said, have you considered just cutting back? Have you considered scaling back and then growing more slowly and figuring it out? before you let it grow this big again. And I remember a sense of peace came over me and I thought, you know, I don't have to grow it big while I don't know what I'm doing. I could slow down the growth, go back to cleaning and not trying to manage all these employees and, and struggling with customers complaining and going out on estimates because my employees need houses and then me having to clean because I've got more houses than workers. And I realized, you know, I could go back to cleaning and slow down the growth and then figure it out and grow the right way. And that's exactly what I did. And so I'm so glad my husband didn't let me just quit. You know, but they say uh, most people quit three feet from gold. And I am so grateful that I did not quit because I literally was three feet from gold, but I didn't know it. And I could not see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I wish I could tell you that, you know, a year later we were doing fabulous and then we were grossing a million dollars and we lived happily ever after. I had no idea that I had a really tough road ahead of me. I had no idea, but I did slow down the growth so that I didn't wreck my reputation, my health <laughs> and, you know, basically destroy my time with my family, I did slow things down and then I began to grow it slowly. Now, because I am driven as I grew my business, I thought I knew what I was doing and I did build it to a 
decent size. I mean, I think we got to about a half a million, a little bit above a half a million. And it was rare that I would have to go out and clean. But I had a whole new set of problems. You know, I like to tell people who take my training course, Cleaning Business Fundamentals, that there's a new devil at every level. And this is so true. So, you know, the challenges I had when I was doing the cleaning and trying to find workers were different than they were and they became when I built a relatively big business, but it was filled with drama and chaos and rampant employee turnover and unbelievable frustration. And I just, I was so miserable. And by this time, my kids were older, they were in school and, you know, I'd gotten a handle on not working all the time. And by that time I had gotten, um, you know, a couple of people hired that could do estimates because back then we did only in-home estimates. So I'd gotten things relatively under control, but I wasn't really making that much money. And I was pretty miserable. My employees were walking all over me. I had no leverage. I couldn't discipline employees. I had one employee that I figured out she had 30 absences in one year. And that was when I hit rock bottom. And I said, what am I doing wrong? And I couldn't fire her because I also had discovered that same year as I was trying to figure it out, I discovered that not a single employee, good, bad, or indifferent, not a single employee had stayed with my company longer than 24 months. I had turned over dozens and dozens and dozens of employees in a matter of, you know, a couple of years or maybe a three year period of time. And I was miserable. I had no leverage. I couldn't fire this one employee who could clean good, who had 30 absences because I couldn't find anybody to take her place. At least she hadn't quit yet. And I discovered that all of my employees were turning over within a 24 month period of time. That is when I hit rock bottom. There were a few other things that happened that I thought I was going to lose my mind. And I, I no longer had pride in my business. I was no longer delivering high quality services I had built my reputation on. My employees were taking advantage of me and I hit rock bottom. And sometimes I do believe that when you hit rock bottom is when you finally say, okay, I'm done tolerating a mess. And you go and find the answers to your problems. And I hit rock bottom. I was actually going backwards. I was, I was going to lose my business within a year to two years because we were shrinking backwards rapidly and our overhead had ballooned to the point where I was operating in the red and I knew I would eventually be bankrupt if I could not figure out how to make money but still grow and not have to clean and manage all these employees who keep quitting. And so when I hit rock bottom, uh, somebody recommended to me that I hire these consultants that had a really big reputation out of Chicago, Illinois. And that changed my life. Now, that was the most expensive thing I've ever bought in my life besides a house. <laughs> well, that's not really true. I've bought cars more expensive than that. But um, the consultants that came to my office that I hired, they were $40,000. And I look on that today and I'm like, oh, my goodness. You know, there was no Internet. There were no video trainings like this or training courses like CBF but I did build CBF on the training that I paid $40,000 for. And I have no idea to this day, my husband and I still laugh about it, but we have no idea how on earth did we afford that? I mean, we were borrowing money and maxing out credit cards and drawing a line of credit. And I think my husband sold a few things and we came up with the money and we hired these consultants and it was the best decision I'd ever made in my business. I had decided I had hit rock bottom. I was going to be out of business in a year. So what did it matter? Because if I went out of business in a year, I wouldn't be able to pay them anyway. <laughs> and so I took a gamble and I hired them, even though I could not afford them. And it was the best decision I ever made. Nine months later, we were grossing a million dollars and we've made over $25 million plus in sales ever since. And I learned from them a system of business that I have been following for over 25 years and teaching for over 10 years. And it changed my life. 
it changed our wealth. It changed our freedom. And it gave me the formula and the tools and the confidence to grow my business as big as I wanted it. And when I got to the million dollar mark, which has been, goodness, probably at least 15 years ago, when I hit the million dollar mark, I told my office that I was not going to be coming in much more. And about 10 to 12 years ago, I became a 100% absentee owner and I use the systems and the knowledge that I gained from hiring those consultants to create a 100% freedom-based business. What that means is I don't go in anymore. I don't even fill in when my office manager goes on vacation for two weeks. She'll just send me a text that says, hey, don't stop by this week to see me because I'm out of town. And that shows you how truly hands-free self-running this business is. So I know how horrible it feels when the business runs you. And I know how unbelievably simple the concepts are to fix a broken business or to keep a business from becoming a mess that you have to fix years later after painful uh, frustration and drama and chaos and not making much money and thinking you're going to have to throw in the towel. So if you know you have what it takes, if only you had the knowledge, then invest in knowledge. Don't invest in stuff. You know, I could have bought a car. I could have bought a nicer house, but I hired these consultants to fix my business. And what happened is I created a paycheck and income that I never thought possible for myself. And then I created freedom. I never thought I could have with an income that I created. And so invest in yourself if you know you have what it takes because knowledge is priceless. Stuff becomes useless in a very short period of time. So why is this so important? And why is this this story important to me to share with you? It's because I have been exactly where you are. I know everything you're going through. I know what it feels like to lose the pride you once had in your business and the spark and the fire that you had because the day-to-day grind is beating you up. And I know what it feels like to have to suck it up and swallow your pride and let your employees walk all over you because you have no leverage. And if you get mad and fire their butt, They'll be like, okay, whatever. And they'll walk and I'll have 10 clients I can't service. So I know how it feels, but it is a lie. This entrepreneurial myth, this, this roller coaster that people live sometimes their entire cleaning business career, it is a lie. And it is a myth that to be wealthy, you have to work all the time and that to make a lot of money that you have to trade having a life. You know, half of corporate America believes this. They work 80, 90 hours a week to make a six-figure income. And I, I, I truly do not believe, if you know what you're doing, that that is necessary. I have helped many business owners reach their business goals, create the freedom they wanted, the income they desired. Some of them have gone on to build million-dollar maid services. They're what we call mop-free millionaires And now they have 100% freedom-based businesses and they're doing other things. What I did with my free time when I became an absentee owner over 12 years ago is I built a big nonprofit, Cleaning for a Reason. Many of you are familiar with it. That's what I did with my free time. Um, And then I went and bought another business. (laughs) I don't know what I was thinking, but I bought the speed cleaning business from Jeff Campbell. And then I built a global consulting business. So I work as hard as I ever have, but I do not work in my cleaning business. I work hard coaching and teaching and traveling and speaking all over the country and speaking on behalf of my nonprofit. And I love every minute of it. So here's the moral of that story. I'm doing what I love. I'm doing what I want. And there was a point in my business, I did not love it. I was frustrated. I hated it. I wanted to walk away. I wanted to abdicate the throne. And if you're nearing burnout 
it's the worst stage to be in because you're more likely to abdicate than learn how to delegate. And um, before I got to that burnout point and I turned things around, I really didn't think there was any hope. And so I'm going to show you a little bit today about working smarter and not harder. I know that's a cliche, but you don't have to work harder to create wealth and freedom, but you do have to work smarter. You have to be strategic and incredibly intentional. So I'm going to share with you today three things that I had to change in my business before I could have a seven-figure self-running cleaning business. And some people will dismiss what I'm about to share because it's too simple. It's not complicated enough. <laughs> Here's the thing, I was really good at complicating things back in the early days of my business. When I was striving and struggling and barely surviving, I was trying my best to create systems and I complicated everything. And a team of consultants helped me untangle my web of complicated systems and they actually gave me the right systems that were pretty simple, and now it's simple to teach. And so please don't dismiss the things I share today because you say, well, that's just too simple. It's not complicated. And succeeding in business almost never is. Here's the thing, doing the right things in business is easy to do, and it's easy not to do, and that's the problem. Um, that's why so many businesses will easily not do the right things. So it's not complicated. And I am going to share some things with you today that will help you get your business to where you want it to be. It doesn't have to be where I want it to be. It's where you care. It's where you want it to be. So once I mastered these three things, I realized that I could create a business I could create other businesses like my nonprofit and I could go and speak and train and help other people. And isn't having a successful business way beyond just making a lot of money? I mean, it's nice to make good money, but money doesn't actually feed your soul. Just like when my company goes out and cleans for a cleaning for reason cancer patient. That feeds my soul and it feeds the soul of my staff. And, you know, making a lot of money is a nice thing. I'm certainly not knocking it, but there has to be more to life and entrepreneurialism and success than just enriching yourself. And so part of why I'm so passionate about this entire concept of building a seven figure self-running business, why? Part of the reason I'm so passionate, I mean, you know, if you don't care about having a million dollar or a two million dollar maid service, that's fine. That, that, that would be your discretion to decide what is success to you. But just having the systems in place that you can build a seven figure freedom business, why does that matter? And I will tell you, the reason it matters to me is... I get to spend my days doing one of the most fulfilling things I ever thought I could ever do in my life, and that is change other people's lives. I want to change other people's lives. I don't want to just make money, go home, drive a Mercedes, float around in a swimming pool, go on vacations, and you know, count my dollars at the bank. I really want to make a difference. And every person that I've ever talked to that were aligned with my values and were really a good fit for my program, I could tell they also want to make a difference. And so building a seven-figure self-running business has more to do with making an impact in this world. It has more to do with making a difference than making a paycheck. And I want to be crystal clear on that because if you're miserable and unhappy and stingy and just a miserable person right now, that won't change when you're wealthy. There's plenty of miserable, nasty, mean, hateful, wealthy people out there. And if making a difference in this world and changing other people's lives 
is important to you, then I think you, and I include myself in that, we have an obligation to succeed because then we can help other, per, other people. Um, I have a concept that I teach on some of my keynotes where I speak to in, uh, groups that are non-cleaning business. And it's called lift as you climb. There's nothing wrong with climbing, but who are you lifting up? The very first place to lift starts at home. The second place to lift is with your employees. If you're climbing the ladder and stepping on your employees, it's really not a fun life and there is no purpose and joy in that. Every business owner, just about every business owner I've ever spoken to has actually said, before they ever said, I want more money for myself, has actually told me they want to create a better job for their employees. They want to be able to afford to pay their employees better. They truly desire to create a benefits package for their employees. Almost, almost, maybe not 100%, but almost every cleaning business owner that I've ever talked with or had a strategy session has mentioned their employees before themselves. Many of them who are making pitiful paychecks for the hours they put in, they're cleaning all day and they're doing their books at night and sending out invoicing and answering customer complaints. And I mean, they're working like dogs. I've seen many of these business owners making really tiny paychecks tell me their number one desire was to pay their employees better and to give them benefits. And I truly believe that is because for most people, it is not about the money. Succeeding is about the purpose. It's about making a difference. It's about mattering in this world. It is about helping other people achieve something. When you become an amazing, successful employer, you create an incredible job for employees that would not otherwise have had the experience that you can create. So it's far more uh, and far beyond just making money. And I'm not knocking it because a lot of people say, yeah, well, that's easy for you to say because you're making money right now. But you know what? I could lose it all tomorrow, right? Something can happen. I could lose it all tomorrow. If you have internal peace and joy and happiness, I can go and serve others any day of the week. And that gives me so much joy. And if you are trying to build your business and build your empire just to be rich, you're going to find that it is miserable at the top. You've got to feed your soul. And the best way to feed your soul is to feed other people's souls. So let me share with you the three things that you absolutely must get right in business for you to even think about uh, having or building a seven-figure self-running business. First of all, number one, and again, I told you these were simple, so stick with me. Number one, you have to have the right mindset. Number two, you have to have the right systems. And number three, you have to have the right team. It's that simple. And if you wanted something more complicated than that, then you're probably going to go and keep complicating your business and you're probably never going to achieve what you could have. So hang in there with me because I'm going to go a little bit deeper on each of these concepts. First of all, the right mindset, the right mindset. In order to create a highly successful self-running business, you have to have the right mindset around money and time. These are the two areas that I find people struggle with the most and they don't even know it. One of my favorite quotes of all times is by Jim Rohn. And uh, if you've never heard any of his speeches, he's, he, was in, he was an incredible speaker. He's been uh, gone for many, many years, but find some old YouTube videos um, that were uploaded. But Jim Rohn, one of my favorite quotes by Jim Rohn, and it speaks directly to mindset, is where he said, rich people have big libraries and poor people have big TVs. Wealthy people invest in knowledge, poor people invest in stuff. And I'm not saying that to disparage anybody. I mean, I can remember in the day when we had yeah, barely had two nickels to rub together and we bought this little postage size stamp of a black and white TV. 
So, you know, I have a big television in my house. But the point is, this, this addresses mindset that holds us back. Not opportunity, mindset. People who value knowledge are going to invest in knowledge. And people who don't value knowledge are going to invest in stuff. And the minute you buy stuff, whether it's a car that you've always wanted, or a TV, or a new computer, or an iPhone, the minute you buy stuff, it's worth less than what you paid for it. But when you invest in knowledge, you can actually make back that money 10 times over. So let's talk a little bit about mindset around money. Um, we have to fix our mindset around money first before you can succeed with the right systems or the right tactics, which I'm going to share some with you in just a little bit. So bear with me. But you have to fix your mindset first or you will not follow or create or capture the right systems and tactics for your business. So before you can become wealthy and build a business um, and create massive impact in this world, you have to fix your mindset. And the first mindset fix to address is the mindset around money. If you find yourself living paycheck to paycheck, and I'm going to ask you to ask yourself right now, and you can shake your head yes if that's the case. Do you find that you do live paycheck to paycheck? If you find that you are living paycheck to paycheck, it is possible that you have cultivated a scarcity mindset uh, in that relationship with money. If you're afraid to spend your money, it's because you're afraid you can't make more. Or if you spend everything you make living paycheck to paycheck, it's because you don't believe the money will be there later to buy the things you want. Either way, spending all the money you have or not being willing to spend the money you have because you're afraid you won't have more later is a scarcity mindset. Both never spending your money or always spending everything you have, basically living paycheck to paycheck, represents a scarcity mindset around money. Just acknowledge this. It is the first step to changing it. So with a scarcity mindset, you'll find yourself always never having enough. With a scarcity mindset, we never have enough. Um, so how do you shift from that scarcity mindset to what is known as an abundance mindset. How do you make that shift? I had a scarcity mindset early in the day and I had to make these incremental changes and transformations. None of it changed overnight for me. I had plenty of baggage I had to work on. So first let me explain what the abundance mindset looks like. An abundance mindset is the opposite, of course, of a scarcity mindset. An abundance mindset can literally see the positive in most outcomes, you know, the, the positive outcome that could possibly happen. That's what the abundance mindset sees things as. Whereas a scarcity mindset can only see the what ifs of negative possible outcomes around money. So for example, since we're on the Zen, Zen Made Summit, I was thinking uh, with that more scarcity mindset, a scarcity mindset about money would be something like this dialogue that goes in your head, oh, if I sign up with Zen Made, it will cost me money every month when I could save that money uh, and manage my contacts for free in Google right? That's more of a scarcity mindset because you're thinking of the, the most negative outcome, and that is that it will be a waste of money, that you will lose that money. Whereas an abundance mindset would see the, and I'm not pushing Zen made, I'm just saying because they graciously had this summit, it's a perfect example of how we think about money. And an abundance mindset would think of the best possible outcomes if they signed up with ZenMade. So their inner dialogue would be something like, this program's gonna help me save so much time and money, I'll have more time for sales and marketing and I'll grow my business and I'll make more money. So that's really thinking about the best possible outcome instead of the worst possible outcome. Or, oh my goodness, I know it's 
you know, I don't know what, 150, 200 bucks a month to pay for this program, but I'm going to stop being so disorganized and actually losing money from jobs that I forgot to get scheduled. And I'll make more in jobs that I didn't lose than it will cost me. So that's thinking about the best possible outcome around spending your money. Here's the thing. You can always make more money. You cannot make more time. I don't regret any of the sales I didn't make, but I do regret the time I did not spend with my kids when I was trying to figure it out and do everything on my own. I've made back lost sales tenfold over the last few years, over the last 25 years. But the time with my family, the ball games I missed, the dinners I missed, the bath times and the story times that I wasn't there, that time is lost forever and I cannot make it back. So that brings me to mindset number two, scarcity, and scarcity around time. This mindset number two that needs to be addressed is the opposite of the mindset around money. In fact, we think we have too much of it. Uh, we think time is a commodity, that there's plenty of it to go around, and it's not. We have it backwards. It's the complete opposite. We actually need a scarcity mindset around time. It's not renewable. Guess what? Bill Gates only gets 24 hours a day. Richard Branson and Warren Buffett, billionaires, they each have 24 hours a day. And so do you. And so do I. And the clock starts over every single day. So what I did not do yesterday, that time is lost forever. You can't make it back, I can't make it back, and neither can them. We can make more money, we cannot make back more time. How do you value your time? That will tell you if you are steeped in a scarcity mindset. What is your time worth? When I talk to business owners, they talk to me about what they feel their time is worth, but they don't really put it that way. They just tell me what they're doing with their time. And oftentimes I discover they are doing 10 and 20 and $30 an hour work. They're cleaning another job. They're pushing paperwork. They're entering clerical data. They're doing $10 an hour work instead of $100 an hour work. Why? Because they don't value their time. It's like, well, I can save the money by doing this myself. And so what happens is you need more than 40 hours in a week to get everything done. So now it's 60, 70, 80 hours a week. It's nights and weekends. And people don't even want to admit, but they're checking emails and, and giving quotes on Sundays. Well, how, what is your time worth with your family? What if I offered you $20 for you to skip your kid's high school graduation? Would you do that? Of course you wouldn't. What if I said, well, I'll give you $60 to skip your... Your, your, your son's high school graduation or your daughter's high school graduation. You wouldn't do that. What if I offered you $1,000? You know, graduation is only about three hours. If you skip the graduation for, for 1,000 bucks, you just made $300 an hour, plus $333 an hour. What's your time worth? Would you skip your kid's high school graduation for 1,000 bucks? I would say most people would say no. What about for $10,000? What about for $100,000? What is your time worth? And what is that time worth with your family, the memories that you want to create that you will never have a second chance to create? You'll never have a second chance to attend your child's baseball game or when he was chosen as MB, the MVP player or his first football game or your daughter's piano recital or your your daughter's ballet recital or, or whatever, you will never be able to make back that time. But you could make back the money you missed out on by just putting down the mop and being present and valuing your time. Let me tell you about the exact moment when I made that critical mindset shift in my business around time. I remember it to this day. My husband had planned a very special weekend getaway. We were going to the Adolphus Hotel, and it was a Friday. I don't know where my kids were. They must have been gone for the weekend for some reason. 
And uh, we were going to go to the hotel, spend the Friday night, go to this fancy French room restaurant we both loved, and just have kind of a romantic weekend. And that would be a Friday. And he made reservations, and I was at work, and he got home from work, and I was still at work, and I was typing estimates, and we had chaos, and we had drama, and we had somebody quit, and I had houses to reschedule, and I had done a whole bunch of estimates. I needed to get somebody on the schedule for Saturday because I had told yes. And all of a sudden, I look up, and the clock is 7 p.m. on a Friday night. And I thought, ooh, I wonder what time the dinner reservation is. Yikes, I hope I didn't blow it. And I got home and my husband was hurt and uh, he had canceled the reservations because it was too late to fight that downtown um, Friday night traffic from the suburbs of Flower Mound and drive all the way out to downtown Dallas at seven o'clock at night when I had worked ridiculously long at my office, really for no reason, it was Friday. What couldn't wait till Saturday or Sunday? And well, I wasn't going to be home Saturday. I was going to spend the night at the hotel with my husband for a romantic weekend. And, you know, he wasn't mad. He didn't yell at me. He didn't, you know, he wasn't rude, but he was hurt. And I felt terrible. And I said, oh, we can still go. We can still go. We'll just call the restaurant, let them know we'll be late. And he said, no, it's too late. He said, I was hoping we'd get there at three o'clock in the afternoon. You'd leave early. And, uh, I've been waiting and waiting for you to come home and you never did. I just called and canceled. He said, don't worry about it. Just forget it. And, you know, he didn't, he never held it over my head. He was incredibly gracious about it. But I felt like two cents. And the, it's painful to this day for me to even think about it. I felt like two cents because I had booked, I think, three or four extra jobs. And back then, that's been quite a few years ago, like, 20 years ago, maybe I had booked quite a few extra jobs. So I probably booked five or $600 by staying late. And that was big to me back then. And I realized that it wasn't worth it, that I gave up an incredibly special weekend with my husband that he planned, which every woman wants guys to do, right? He planned and I gave it up to make a few hundred more dollars. And that was the day my mindset changed around time. And I worked really hard the rest of my career to never do that again, devalue my time. And I traded a weekend of memories for a few hundred dollars and it was a mistake. So what is your mindset around time? Do you value it? Have you made the decision? Well, I'll just work my head off like a maniac for the next 20 years trying to figure it out on my own and do everything myself and do my own scheduling and, and not get any help and save a few bucks. Or are you ready to say, uh, my time is too precious for me to squander it by saving myself a few hundred or a few thousand dollars and maybe losing the memories that will never be created? I have a passion to share this with business owners because you do not have to trade the memories for the money. You, it isn't an either or. There's just a right way and a wrong way, and I wasn't doing it the right way, but I determined that day not to let that happen again. And for the most part, I did a pretty good job over the next few years at keeping it under control and finding my way and not letting things get out of control. And I made decisions around what time I will leave, and I stuck to them whether I made a sale or not. And I do teach that to people now. And I've been following that for many, many years before. I became an absentee owner. So secret number one is mindset around time and money, and both are important. We value our money too much, which we can make more of at any time, and we don't value our time enough, and I think we have it backwards. Get that straight, and you'll be ready to move forward with the principle number two, the right system. So once you move past the right mindset, you got to have the right systems. Without the right systems, you will spend in your wheels, you will struggle to make money, and you will never have freedom because the freedom is in the structure. So I'm going to go quickly through the five proven systems that I have found. If you don't get these five critical systems right in your business, you cannot have both prosperity and freedom. Now, you might have one without the other. You might not make very much money, but you have some freedom, 
or you might have, you know, pretty decent income, but you have no freedom, but you're not going to have both if you don't get these five critical systems in place. These are the right systems for a residential cleaning business. Number one, this was a big one for me in the program that I teach, Cleaning Business Fundamentals. You have to have a proven profit system. And I've been teaching the, the basically the profit first formula before the book ever came out, profit first, the cleaning business fundamentals profit first system or approach to business for over 10 years. Because if you don't get the profit right, nothing else works. You can't pay your employees well, you can't pay yourself well, and you have to do everything yourself and work like a dog. So profit is first which seems a little counterintuitive because I have found most business owners profit is last. They build their entire business model and overhead and expenses around the way they envision their business to look instead of around the income they envision they would have. And I believe that's backwards. And that's why so many business owners have built a business that's so low on profits, they can't afford to pay their employees well or create benefits that their employees would value. So profit first, you have to have a system. Quickly, my system, which is a unique formula, obviously most people don't follow this particular system until unless you've taken the CBF program, but an example of a profit system is designating how the revenues will be spent or allocated. Okay, it's that simple. It's not complicated. So for example, in my uh, CBF profit first system, we designate 55% of revenue, which is a lot, I get that, but we designate 55% of revenue to pay our employees wages and our federal uh, and state labor burden. So that would be workers comp and payroll taxes. So we allocate 55% of all revenue. It is a non-negotiable. We don't pay people 30% or 60% or 65%. It's a non-negotiable. We want our all-in costs for labor, including our labor burden, to be in the 55% range, not less, not more. And there's a reason behind that. And then we allocate 25% of all revenue for overhead. And that tells us when we can hire an office manager, when we can increase our marketing budget, if we can go buy a new computer or we better buy a refurbished one. That 25% overhead is our budget for operations outside of cleaning employee wages. And then the last piece, the profit, the owner's income and profit, we allocate 20%. Now that gets a little squeeze once you get above a million dollars, but I see way too many people in this industry, they're operating with owner's income and profit margins of eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 15, 16% profit margin when your business is super small. If anything, it can actually be larger than 20% when your business is super small, but our allocation for owner's income and profit is 20%. That right there, in its simplest form is a profit formula. And if you have a profit formula, which will be different than mine because I have an entire system that, that fits within this formula. If you have a profit formula and you know what it is, you can protect your profit and you can guarantee you will have profit if you protect it, if you know what it is. And so having a profit system in place, and in my opinion, the right profit system, one that pays you well, so that you're now working for peanuts is number one. And then number two of five critical systems is staffing. So many people don't get this right. They are desperately looking for better workers. They are looking for A players. They're trying to find, you know, wonderful employees. You know, they're, they're looking for the perfect employee and the problem is they need to be the perfect job. And that's where most cleaning businesses really struggle. They want better employees, but they don't know how to be a better job. If you want amazing employees, you have to create an amazing job. The sad, bitter truth, let me be blunt, is 
we actually get the staff we deserve. And we don't, I don't mean to be harsh, but we get the staff we deserve. We pay D minus wages and we hope for A plus employees. And it doesn't work that way. Um, when you build a business that cannot afford to pay A wages, you will not attract A players, A team members. And so profit is such an important piece of being able to attract the right kind of employees by making sure you're able and can afford to be the right kind of job. People have it backwards. They're looking for better employees and they're not working on being a better job. And if you have that backwards, you will be like a hamster on a wheel, spinning your wheels every single day, watching your best employees turn over and over and over and tolerating your worst employees that you wouldn't mind firing, but you don't have the leverage, you don't have the manpower to cut them loose. And so don't get this piece backwards. The staffing piece is the most important piece in this business. And most people are focused entirely on growing their customer base and making sure their customers ha are happy. You know what, I just held a team meeting uh, Tuesday, a team meeting, a quarterly team meeting at my company, and I do a big rah-rah inspirational two to three hour workshop and training event. And we held a team meeting where we honored, recognized, and uh, awarded our employees who have been with us three years, five years, 10 years, and one of them 20 years cleaning. And they were high-fiving and having fun. And these team meetings happen, these quarterly team meetings happen at 7 a.m. And short of, I'm sure, one or two complaints here and there, for the most part, they come in happy and excited and we do door prizes and we have fun and we play icebreaker games to do some team building and, uh, and, and warm up the atmosphere. And then we always have a theme every quarter to make our employees feel so special. We have worked incredibly hard, and this is one of the things I teach around staffing, at building an employee wow culture. We have worked so hard at building a wow culture with our employees. And if you're not working to build a wow culture, Paying them great will not be enough. Or if you've put all your time and energy in building an incredible employee culture, but you can't afford to pay them well, that won't be enough. You need good pay and an incredible culture for people to want to become career cleaners. And I, I, that it's kind of one of my signature things is to show people how to build your team with career cleaners, people who want to work for you uh, for their entire career, not people who see this as a crummy little stepping stone job to the real job that they want. And so staffing is something that can literally be systemized. And I get it, people are different, right? People are different. It's hard to imagine systemizing hiring and staffing, but you can systemize it if you have a strategic approach. If you are very intentional about profit so you can afford to pay well and create some, be some benefits and you create intentionally an incredible culture with your employees. All right, number three, training. Of course, you knew I would say this. You have to systemize your training and you have to have the right training systems. Now, I used to wing it years ago before I found the speed cleaning book. I, you know, I can't take credit for that amazing book. Jeff Campbell wrote it. I wish I wrote it. Um, I can't take credit for that book, but I bought that book years ago when I was struggling to train my employees that I was cleaning with and trying to train and they just couldn't clean right. And if they did clean good, they were so slow, I couldn't make any money with them. And when I found that book, it transform my business. And now, of course, um, I bought the speed cleaning business from Jeff Campbell. He and I rewrote the book for the professional cleaning community. And now we teach business owners all over the world how to implement a systemized cleaning system and training program for their staff. Here's the thing, and here's something I discovered a few years ago, just kind of by accident and by teaching. 
and I teach this now, there are actually three people to train in a company. And most training programs only train one person. And that's been the gap in the training. And that was the gap I had in my own business for years, right? I had Jeff Campbell's Speed Cleaning, the consumer book. And all I had really was a formula for training the cleaner. That's all I had. But over time, I realized a gap in the industry and a gap in my own business. And I realized there's somebody else that has to be trained and there isn't anything out there for it. So I created a train the trainer system, a train the trainer. It's not the same as training the cleaner. It's not the same as knowing how to clean to know how to train. And so this is a three-legged stool that training and systemizing your training to really work and to create efficient, high-quality, consistent cleaners, it's like a three-legged st uh, stool. You, of course, you have to train the cleaner, right? The trainee, I get that. We've all been doing that with the speed cleaning book and the DVD for years. But then we have to train the trainer. And without that train the trainer training, she's not going to do a very good job training the cleaner. The third person that wasn't being trained in our industry was the owner or the office manager, if the owner isn't around, the owner. We weren't training the owners. So I developed the entire employee training system to, first of all, teach the owner how you should be structuring your, your training program and what you should abandon and how you should approach it and how you should pay your trainers and how long your training program should be and how to measure performance on a daily basis. And I give you all the forms and the tactics. So I had to develop that with my own business, especially when I wanted to be an absentee owner and I wasn't gonna be there to make sure training went well. So I, tr I created the speed cleaning employee training system. We train the owner, we train the trainer, we train the cleaner. Even if you don't take advantage of my system, make sure you understand. First comes the owner's mindset around training and your approach to training. Second comes how to teach the trainer how to train. And then third comes um, how to train the cleaner. All right, number four, the right system number four is branding and marketing. Once you get the other critical pieces in order, the profit, the staffing, the training, you need branding and marketing strategies, not just tactics. Here's the difference. Tactics come and go, right? 10 years ago, we were all advertising exclusively in yellow pages. And about six or seven years ago, it kind of evaporated everywhere around the country. Nobody was advertising in printed yellow page or phone books. Okay, about five years ago, very few people were spending money marketing on Facebook. Now almost everybody is. And Google AdWords is now the flavor of the month for marketing. Those are all tactics, but those come and go. If you do not have a strategic approach to branding and marketing, when the tactics change, you're gonna be up the creek. You're gonna be like, uh-oh, what do I do? My business tanked overnight. Okay, so, you have to have a marketing and branding strategy. Now I teach both, I teach tactics as well, but the strategy is really understanding why clients buy from you, okay? Why do they choose your service if you're charging more, okay? It's obvious why they choose your service if you're the lowest price provider with the best reputation in town, but why do people buy from you when you do charge more? And how do you find the right clients, the clients who are actually aligned with your values, those high paying repeat customers who won't nitpick your work and won't torment your employees and actually appreciate them and give them a tip and treat them well. How do you find those clients? And where do you market your business in order to make sure you're not capturing clients that are just all over town and you're driving all over the place when you could be serving right next door. So this is strategy. This isn't tactics. This is understanding where and how and who to market your business to. So a marketing strategy is a system. One great source, and I, I forgot to share some books that I brought with me today. This is one of the books I was talking about called Profit First. So uh, make sure you get this. It's, it's a concept I've been teaching for over 12 years. This book just came out a few years ago and it is incredible. It will transform your thinking around your profit. 
And then another one of my favorites is another book around profit called Profits Aren't Everything, They're the Only Thing. So those are a couple of books that I wanted to recommend to you. But back to marketing, um, this is a great book for marketing tactics and marketing strategy. Because even when the tactics change, this book will still make sense. And it's Marcus Sheridan, They Ask, You Answer. It is phenomenal. I taught a two-day, no, I'm sorry, a three-day marketing and branding um, live event back in March. And we recorded it. It is available. But uh, we talked about marketing and branding and tracking and measuring everything. And this is a really great book. So the Marcus Sheridan book, They Ask, You Answer, will give you some, some great tactics as well as an overall strategy that will never change even when tactics shift. So I, I truly believe you need a combination of paid and organic marketing. You can't put all your eggs in one basket. You can't say, oh, well, I'm gonna do everything on Facebook. Well, Facebook could change overnight and change the rules. And then what are you going to do? Your phones won't ring and you can literally tank. And so I truly believe you need both paid and organic marketing. That means marketing that comes to you for free or people who just find you. Um, some low cost or completely free marketing tactics right now that work. Again, the flavor of the month would be posting in Facebook groups, joining groups and posting about your service and doing this on a regular basis. It costs you nothing. It does generate leads and people make sales all day long with that free tactic. Nextdoor is another platform similar to Facebook, but not quite, where people post and talk about their community, their neighborhood, and they make recommendations and ask for recommendations around local service providers. So that's free, posting on Nextdoor. Email automations, whether you use MailChimp or Infusionsoft or uh, Simple Growth or Constant Contact, email automations. This is the most low cost way to constantly remind your prospects that they should give you a try. Google AdWords, of course, this is paid marketing. Facebook ads, um, those are digital mediums, but they can change tomorrow. Don't do all your advertising in just one or two places. Door hangers, printed door hangers still work, and that in, in, in neighborhoods you're allowed to, of course, put your door hangers out. It is a great way to generate business and it doesn't cost you much. It's, it's very cheap, especially if you are the owner and you're doing the door hangers, they work, or you're incentivizing your staff to do five arounds, put door hangers around the five doors of the house they just cleaned. Mass mailers, they still work. And anybody that tells you print does not work, uh, they either don't know how to make it work, they've never done it, or they've got something to sell you, <laughs> like digital advertising. Um, but like money mailers and valve packs, when you target strategic zip codes and zones, they are low cost print mediums for marketing and they work. Networking events, low cost, high impact, public speaking, cleaning for a reason. One of the best branding opportunities you can put in place in your business is being a part of cleaning for a reason. It is Branding with maximum impact. And here's the thing, not any one type of marketing I just described, and there are many, many other marketing strategies and sources, but not any one marketing thing that I just mentioned is the silver bullet. Quit looking for the silver bullet, the free or cheap source that produces hundreds of customers. It doesn't exist. What works is layers and layers of marketing done repetitively. That's what works. And this is what I mean by a marketing strategy, number four. And then Number five, the last one of the right systems is sales conversions. So who cares how much marketing you have in place if you can't win the sale? And who cares if you win the sale if you're the cheapest priced service in town? Do market surveys, and I would suggest about every six months. Don't let a year or two years go by that you don't check the professional, the professional franchised services to see what their price points are, to make sure you're not 
devaluing your service. If everybody else is getting 45 or 50 per labor hour, why are you still charging 30 or 35? Are you not worth it? Do you not clean good? Of course you do. So you have to do market surveys on a regular basis, I would say no less than twice a year, to make sure your sales conversions are at the highest price point that the market will bear. Um, there's no point in working cheap. Unless you are the cheapest service in town, there are no advantages to pricing in the middle. No advantages whatsoever. Unless you're the cheapest service in town, there's no advantages to being priced in the middle. Abandon the whole marketing campaigns of we are budget friendly. All that means is our, we're priced in the middle. And there are no advantages to being priced in the middle. You might as well price at top dollar and learn sales conversion strategies to win those clients at top dollar. When you win the right clients, they will pay top dollar for your service and you'll be able to make a profit, make more money, um, create a bigger income, treat your employees better. So having a sales system and a sales strategy for converting the leads that you get as a result of all your marketing at the highest price point, this is critical. So real quick, before I wrap things up, let's wrap some things up and just do a quick review because those are the five critical systems, the right systems that have to be addressed in your business. And then I'm going to recap um, the three things that you must have in place, the right mindset, number one, uh, the right systems, number two, and then number three is the right team. And I touched on this a little bit and I talked a few extra minutes around employees and staffing, but really understanding how to have the right team and how to build a culture and a company filled with A players goes way beyond just hiring better cleaners. Okay, the right team is your make or break when it comes to freedom. You can make money with the wrong team. You certainly can, but you'll pay for it with your freedom. You can make a lot of money with the wrong team, but again, you will pay for it with quality of life. Your business will need you if you have the wrong team. So I can't stress enough how important this last piece is to building the right team. And of course it starts with being the right leader. And there are so many great books on, on leadership. Um, I'm gonna give a couple of books. I'm gonna share a couple of books with you that I think are phenomenal. And um, they're, they're books on how to build the team that you have. It's, it's things that will help you as a leader. But one of my favorite books, and we've taught this book to our employees at team meetings and handed out the book is The Energy Bus by John Gordon. And it's a lot of mindset work for your employees, admin staff and cleaners, to really help them up level. And I brought some fun, the energy bus, and there's all kinds of really cool references in there around school bus and energy vampires and negative energy drainers. And so anyway, everybody in the company got a little die cast school bus and they got a book. And I did an entire two hour training around mindset and uh, basically, um, how to fuel your life and your work with positive energy. And that's that positive mindset. Another book that I'm going to recommend for building your team and being this incredible leader that your team looks to, and don't just build people to do a better job and, and make you more money, build them personally, and they'll be more loyal and more committed, um, and they'll work harder for you. Um, another book that I love, I couldn't find my book. I think I must left it at my office, but this is the CD, and, and you can get the audible version, the digital version to listen to is how to fill your bucket. How perfect is that for the cleaning industry? And whenever I, I've taught this at least three times to my staff over the years, whenever I teach this, we buy really cute galvanized buckets because my company is called Buckets and Bows Maid Service. And we buy these dippers and we teach the concept of filling other people's buckets. And this is how you fill your own life with joy and that you don't um, fill your life with joy by taking from others. You fill it by giving and serving. It's just an incredible book to teach your staff and to work through. And it's just kind of a, you know, it's just a, a, 
a starting point for up-leveling your leadership so that you begin to attract, cultivate, and retain A players in your company. Here's the thing. Don't settle for C players. I've done it. It's a big waste of time. They don't get better. C players, you can move them around from job to job, and they do all of the jobs crummy <laughs> or mediocre or poorly. And so don't waste your time with C players. Either level them up or level them out. We have a program in our company where, where we, we bring them up or get them out, but they don't get to stay at the C level once we discover an employee is a C player. Whether they're on the admin team or in the field, it does not matter. Kevin O'Leary from the Shark Tank, Mr. Wonderful, um, he said it best. The first time you had an inkling to fire someone, you were right. <laughs> and it is so true. And all of us have, have been there where we knew we should have fired that person a year ago or five years ago. And we wasted so much time. Fill your company with A players. Your team, the team you surround yourself with and you invest your time and energy in will make or break whether or not you ever become a, a freedom-based business where you are ever not completely needed and necessary in your business. So building your team and, and those three things right there, the right mindset, the right systems, and the right team. This is how business owners become mop-free millionaires, which is what we call them in CBF. This is how business owners double their income, begin to create a six-figure paycheck for themselves, um, increase their employee pay, be able to afford uh, company benefits. This is how the business owner up-levels their leadership skills so that they are building an entire team of A players and maybe even you know a few B plus players, but you don't have a bunch of C or C minus or D players. And we actually have regular meetings where we analyze our staff to make sure we're not tolerating C players and that uh, for sure we don't have any D players that should have already been moved up or moved out. So what are you doing? to make sure those three things are right in your business, your mindset around time and money, the right systems that have been captured that work, that ensure that you're profitable, whether you're there or not, that ensure the best staff want to come work for you and don't quit a few months later, to make sure the training is right so it's automated, it's systemized, and it works like a charm. And then, Number four, marketing and branding. What are you do, doing to make sure you have a strategic approach around marketing and branding so that it does work and leads still come in when you don't want to be present all the time in your business so that leads and sales can happen when you're on vacation? And then lastly, sales conversion. If you have a strategy for sales conversion, you can teach people in your office to convert sales. And then sales can happen when you're not there. And that means you're still making money when you're on vacation or just hanging out your house or starting another business or building a nonprofit or going and speaking or consulting other cleaning business owners. One of the most rewarding things I'm seeing happening with our CBF members, um, our CBF pros, this is our advanced tier, is we are grooming them to become CBF coaches to mentor other business owners. One of the things I've learned is the best students are the best teachers. And when you're a teacher, you learn more, you become an even better student. And so it's so rewarding to use your knowledge and your success to go help somebody else who is struggling. And so that's one of the things we're working with our advanced tier in CBF is getting them ready to be paid as CBF coaches and mentors and facilitators. And so building the right team is the only way you'll ever have the freedom and the income to be able to divert your attention to something else. And it is critical. So I hope this has been helpful to you today. I truly believe, even though it sounds a little cliche, 
I truly believe that you can have it all in business because I'm living proof and I never went to college and I didn't have a business plan. But I truly believe if you fix the knowledge gap, you can have it all. You can have a business that doesn't need you day and night and you can make a great income from a business that you don't have to run 100% or that you can step back from. And so read books, take classes, take courses, work with a mentor. It doesn't have to be me. Attend workshops, take notes, begin to create that freedom and that income now. Stop waiting for later. Learn, learn, learn. Learners are earners. So are you ready to grow your business right now? Uh, maybe get out of the field, stop pushing the mop, put it down finally forever. I actually have a program called 90 Days Mop Free, where I show cleaning business owners that are still stuck behind in the mop how to put down the mop forever. Do you want to be a mop-free millionaire? <laughs> Do you, maybe you don't clean, but you want more time, you want freedom, you want more income, you want a business you're proud of, you want to create a business that can afford to treat your employees better, if you want these things, quit settling for not having them. And there was a time in my life where I said, I'm not going to settle for not having these things that I want in my business. Better pay, great benefits, wonderful employees instead of bad ones, customers that appreciated my service, and enough profit to pay myself well. I wanted those things. And finally, I reached rock bottom and I said, I can't tolerate not having these things. I'm not going to tolerate chaos and drama and misery anymore. So I put together something special for the Zen Made attendees, some, a very special training that I am going to offer just during the Zen Made Summit. So you need to get registered right away and um, we will include a link. And actually you can go to debbysardone.com slash events and find the link to register for how to set up a seven figure self-running maid service. So I'm gonna, I mean, if you thought this was helpful, I'm gonna go deeper on information because we'll have five weeks. <laughs> and so I'm gonna do a five week boot camp. So instead of about an hour and a half, we will have uh, five to six hours or a little more. And so how to set up a self-running maid service. And this boot camp, this five-week boot camp, will help you jumpstart your, your future. And I will guarantee that you'll make more money and work less if you follow the steps that I'll be teaching in the boot camp, or I'll refund your tuition. And I mean that 100%, because I am all about the results. And so here are the five topics I'm going to cover. Number one, you'll learn the number one reason your business is stuck and what to do about it the number one reason your business is stuck and what to do about it. You'll learn how to shift from doing the work to managing and coaching inspired workers who love to clean. I've done it. I've taught many people how to do it and you can do it too. So you'll learn how to shift from doing the work to managing and coaching inspired workers who love to clean. Number three, you'll discover your one thing so you can stop doing everything and work less now you've got to discover your one thing this is critical number four tic tac dough <laughs> how to guarantee the highest profit margins as you grow a little rhyming there i was having fun with this tic tac dough how to guarantee the highest profits margins as you grow and then number five the Fix my team formula for leading a team of committed career cleaners. And if you don't believe I know how to do it, you go to my website and look at the testimonials of employees that have worked for my business for years and the things they say about how much they love their job. So the fix my team formula for leading a team of committed career cleaners. Part of the mindset problems that people have is they don't believe that there's anybody out there that would want to clean for you as a career. Well, there isn't right now the way you've created your job. But once you fix that, there are plenty of people out there who would love 
to become your next career cleaner. They are the most wonderful people on the planet. My customers love them. Our admin team loves our, our committed career cleaners, and they are just knocking it out of the park in terms of quality, dependability, training the new staff, setting the example, and inspiring me every time I see them. So uh, just during the summit, this is a really valuable program, this five-week boot camp. Um, I believe I will price it later once I have the videos edited. Um, it will be live for you, so you have to get in in time to start. But we will meet on Fridays, and it will start the end of August, beginning of September. Just check the link for registration dates. But it will be Fridays at 2 p.m. Central, coming up in about a month. And so just during the summit, this is a $2,000 program. You can have it for $997, plus all these bonuses I'm going to give you for free. So it's a $1,997 program that I will offer later at that price point. And if you sign up right now during the summit, we will let you enroll for $997, plus you're going to get this stuff. So first of all, you're going to get the complete CBF Live Marketing and Branding Program. And that was my three-day CBF Live event we videotaped and it was offered at $997. You'll get it for free as a bonus because I know you're gonna to wanna to up-level your marketing when you address some of these other critical issues in your business. And so you'll get that at no cost, a $997 value. And then you're also going to get the Maid Service Business Formation Quick Start. This is um, a workshop series that we are going to do in August on Thursdays. And if you can't make it at the time we're doing this live, you will have the replays. That's a $400 value. So the Maid Service Business Formation Quick Start, even if you're already in business, if you're kind of a startup, this will be incredibly helpful. And then, not everybody will need this, but there are concepts in here that you will learn from anyway. You will also receive as a bonus, if you enroll during this summit, my 90 Days Mop Free program. This was also a $997 program. 90 Days Mop Free. If you're still pushing the mop and you're disappointed about that, you thought you would be done cleaning years ago, managing a team instead of cleaning more toilets, um, I will show you exactly how I've helped many, many people become mop free in 90 days. And that's also a $1,000 uh, bonus. And then I'm going to give you a dozen speed cleaning books and the speed cleaning train the trainer DVD. And so this is like $110 value. So here I brought some today. This is the speed cleaning for the pros book. It's got my name on it. Jeff Campbell and I rewrote the speed cleaning book, which was for consumers. We rewrote this for the pro industry. And um, so you're going to get this book. You're going to get a dozen of them. And then you will get, I only, I think I brought the Spanish version, but I'll give you the English version or the Spanish, whichever you prefer. Uh, most people will want the English version of the Speed Cleaning Remake, the, the modernized, new and improved, updated version of the Speed Cleaning, the Train the Trainer demonstration DVD. And so you get a dozen books and the DVD to begin to train your staff now. <laughs> And uh, you'll also get the quiz that comes with it. And the last thing, I'm going to give you one more thing. That's worth $110, that little bundle right there. The last thing I'm going to give you is a seminar I call Quick Cash, how to make an extra $1,000 in the next 30 days. Just follow what I teach you and you will do it. This will be a $497 value and uh, you can have the workshop for free which will pay for the course if you follow through. So quick cash, how to make an extra thousand dollars in the next 30 days. This whole bundle with the five week boot camp and all the bonuses are worth almost $4,000. It's $3,995 value. And you can get it today for 997, thousand bucks. Do you care more about the money or do you care about your time? So I hope you'll enroll. I would love to go through the boot camp with you. And as always, if at the end of the boot camp you don't think it was worth it and you don't think you will make more money and work less as a result of the training you receive, I'll give your money back. <laughs>
<laughs> so anyway, I know that won't happen. I know you will love it. And I would love to get to work with you. It would be an honor. You can register at debbysardone.com slash events and look for the registration link for how to set up a seven figure self running maid service boot camp. All right, guys, that's it. I hope to see you at the boot camp. I would love the opportunity to work with you. But if not, let me just wrap things up for just a couple of more tips to share with you how you can tie all this information, all this knowledge together and actually implement and get some results either with my workshop or somebody else's in the Zen Made Summit. Um, here's just a few implementation skills that will help you because implementation is the key to success here, period. Implementation is the key to success. Okay, so after the summit, make sure you review everything you've learned. Be sure to take notes throughout the summit and then go back and review all of your notes. Every idea you wrote down, every opinion you heard, identify only the ideas and principles that align with your big goals. So identify only those principles that will align with your big goals, because you're going to hear a lot of great things, but you need to hand pick what aligns with your ultimate big goals. Um, the time between taking those ideas and implementing them in your business is critical. So review your notes and make a note, circle, put a star by, whatever you need to do, those implementation success ideas that will have the biggest impact on your business. Do not try to implement 10 or 15 or 20 things. You're going to hear a lot of great ideas. You need to review your notes and just circle two or three of the biggest ideas that will have the biggest impact on your business, your income, your freedom. And then pause all other training while you're trying to absorb and implement all the things you learned from the summit. Focus on this list of high impact things that you can do to grow your business, make more money, and create more freedom. Thanks, everybody.